The second etude is number 17 in C minor, and it has not been chosen in the 25 years that I've been keeping track. So I hope they enjoy this beautiful, expressive a, uh, C minor etude. The player will start at the beginning and play through the low G in measure 11, then cut to the fermata low G in measure 34, and play through the first note of measure 43, which may be extended by a couple of beats to allow for a full taper on that flick C if desired. There are two small errata. The grace notes following the trill in measure 7 should be slurred into the downbeat of the following measure, like so. And also, assuming that the player needs a breath after the first note of measure 3 and measure 37, the short crescendo at the beginning of measure 37 may be disregarded. I think that's there in error. It will be easiest to think in quarter notes rather than half notes to establish the correct rhythms. Once the player understands the rhythm, some rubato would definitely be appropriate as long as the basic rhythm remains clear. As in any slow etude, the player should demonstrate control in tapering notes at the end of phrases and utilize effective vibrato of various intensities and speeds depending on the register and dynamic level. I suggest playing long tones every day on each note that ends a phrase to develop that kind of control. An additional skill is to learn to start notes without a heavy tongue, which requires the player to have the support set before dropping the tongue off the reed. The turns in measures 2 and 36 may be performed as four equal 32nd notes on the second half of the quarter note F. For the smoothest transition from the low F to A flat in measure 6 and 40, the player should use the right thumb A flat, which is the very lowest key on the right hand, after that low F. Remember, the F key has to come up, though, or the A flat will sound too flat. So here is that. Da, da, da. There's your A flat on the bottom, uh, right thumb key, no F key there, it'll sound too flat. You have a couple times to do that. For the trill in measure 7, finger the high F sharp as usual and trill with the right middle finger. That should work. On the final note of the piece, the player may wish to hold down the C key, flick key, to prevent the note from falling the octave onto the final taper. Some bassoonists vent all the time, so if you're one of the venters, you already know how to do this. If you're a flicker, remember we can also use those flick keys partially depressed or wholly depressed to help us taper off notes in this situation. So I hope they, your players and your bassoonists out there will enjoy expressing yourself on this beautiful C minor etude.